Hello and welcome to News 360 from the News app here in Kandakra. I am Isa Moni. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. Management of Radio Gold and Radio XYZ accuse government of conniving with National Communications Authority to silence them. More than 200 students displaced by rainstorm at Opon Memorial Senior High School in Bekwai, municipality of Shanti region. Also ahead, Savannah Regional Minister shouts down operations of company belonging to Chinese Rosewood Queen Helen Wan. And then on mission to patients at Doma Central give a sign of relief as the Wunlin Health Center there receive an upgrade. On international front, U.S. sends Patriot mi missiles a system to Middle East amid uh, Iran tensions. This and more including sports and entertainment coming up this hour as we begin the news right away. Management of Radio Gold and Radio XYZ has accused government of conniving with the National Communications Authority to silence them. At a vigil, management described the Rambo-style attack on the two stations as a threat to press freedom. Here is Stanley Dibble's report. Scores of supporters from the Opposition National Democratic Congress converged at the premises of Radio Gold at La Tebiokoshi in Accra to participate in the candlelight vigil. In solidarity with the closure of the pro-NDC stations, Radio Gold and XYZ, the half-night vigil was attended by former NDC government officials and seven parliamentarians. The two Accra-based radio stations were shut down on Thursday. May 9, by the National Communications Authority, amidst heavy security for operating without valid license. But this did not go down well, with orators at the vigil. Head of radio at XYZ, Eric Ahiano, indicated there was ongoing dialogue between management of Radio XYZ and the regulator, adding the NCA had declined on several occasions to accept payments for renewal of their license. He again said, the closure of Radio Gold and XYZ is an attempt to suppress press freedom and muzzle some media houses. Hence, they would not allow that to happen. Because we have witnessed what has happened under Rollins, under Kufuor, under Tamils, under Mahama, nobody, I repeat, nobody can push the media out of any space. Former Trades Minister Ekospio Gabra was equally worried about the development. We've had a culture in this country of encouraging openness, pluralism, democracy, Kebi Maman Kebi. And surprisingly, the party that has made the most noise about it being most democratic and believe in human rights are the ones killing it. Communications officer of the National Democratic Congress, Sami Jemfi, who described the closure as shameful, indicated the two radio stations were not closed because they have not renewed their license, rather silenced for exposing corruption in the current administration. They have not shut down Radio Gold and Radio XYZ because of their failure to renew their license. That is not the true reason for the action they have taken. The true reason that this government is not tolerant to divergent views. Former Chief Executive Officer of the National Health Insurance Authority, Sylvester Mensa, called on NDC followers to rise up and treat the enemy the way they should be treated. For these actions, the NDC must rise up. The MPP is calling for social disorder. The NDC will try to resist any attempt at forcing it into social disorder. But when it gets to a point when the party cannot tolerate it anymore, the MPP would have caused it. Let us ensure that we treat the enemy the way an enemy should be treated. Yes. 
The vigil was organized by the Free Media Vanguard. Stanley Nibli, TV3 News, Latabia Koshin. Meanwhile, editor of the Insight newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., has called for the setting up of a solidarity fund to cater for the welfare of workers of the two shutdown radio stations. Here's a report again by Stanley Niblo. After several orators, Kwesi Pratt Jr. took his turn to address the sympathizers present. He said, welfare of staff of the two stations have become critical and would require support for their sustenance. He proposed the setting up of a solidarity fund. If you are not on air, you can't earn money, you can't pay the driver, you can't pay the security, you can't pay the presenter, you can't pay the journalist. If we are truly in solidarity with these stations, then we must begin to think about how the workers here can feed themselves. It must be calm. An important priority. He further urged management of Radio Gold and XYZ to adopt other means of transmission while awaiting for their license to be renewed. Radio Gold must start broadcasting immediately. Yes. XYZ must start broadcasting immediately yes. on any and every platform that is available for that purpose. Whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or whatever, let us use it now. So that the voice of the people, the voice of courage, and the voice of decency will not be silent. He could not comprehend a spectrum has been given to U.S. Army for free in Ghana. A signature campaign would be open on Monday, May 13. Member of Parliament for North Town, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, further hinted of series of actions to be taken to have their concerns addressed. The conveners of this forum have already sent a letter to the Ghana Police Service that next week, if by next week Wednesday, Radio Gold and Radio XYZ are not reopened, there is going to be a mammoth demonstration in Accra. Out of the 131 radio stations in Accra, only two stations were shut down. The remaining 129 were said to be in good standing. But Okujatu Ablakwa wants the NCA to publish the list. And still on the shutdown of the radio stations, the Ghana Journalists Association is urging the NCA to, as in, in, to, in the interest of transparency, publish the authorization status of all broadcast operators in the country. General Secretary of the GJA, Kofi Abwa, spoke on the key points. Our statement is very clear. Maybe I need to simplify it. We are saying that we believe in the rule of law. Um, we are saying that the NCA, it is within the, the power of the NCA to do what it is doing. All that we are saying that bring transparency to bear on the, on, on the things you are doing Process. by publishing. Okay. And we had also indicated that um, if you don't do it that way, it has the tendency, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not saying it, it, it undermines free freedom of, of the press. Of, of, of the media. We say it has the tendency, and, and, and that is quite different from saying so. Indeed, our press statement, we had called on um, radio stations to comply with the law. So it is clear, we, we have de demonstrated cl clearly that we believe in the rule of law. Yeah. Now, you allude, alluded to something, the acquiescence of the, of the NCA. Later, yeah. and, and that leads me to the very law the NCA is, is, is seeking to apply. The uh, electronic communications, uh, Act. electronic co communications um, re regulations, regulation 1073 mm -hmm. says that the, the, the authority shall, shall um, communicate to the operator its decision within six months. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you sit down 14 months after the operator has applied and you don't communicate your decision that because you had violated the law are not going to renew your license. You don't communicate that decision to, 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 to him. Are you not also violating the very law? 
Meanwhile, a Deputy Information Minister, Pius Enam Hajide, says the NCA could not take action earlier as the matter was before court. He spoke earlier on the key points. This matter was subjudicated. It was at the tribunal. And it was at that time that an application, a new application was made. And the NCA, and that's why I wanted to go through the chronology of events. And you would notice that the NCA wrote back that we cannot make a determination on this matter because it is a matter that is still under adjudication at the tribunal. And pursuant to the decision of the tribunal, the NCA indeed wrote to the company, informing the company that because of the necessary implication of the ruling of the tribunal, we are unable to renew your application because the application was for a renewal. And that the proper route to take now is to apply for a frequency as though they because your authorization had actually expired and you had relinquished right. it. And so there may not have been a direct violation of the law that says that respond within six months. Because the matter was actually sixty days. And because because it was subjudicated, there could not have been a determination made on the matter. It would have been in contempt of the tribunal. A member of the NDC legal team who was also on the program, Abraham Amaleva, says the shutdown of the two pro-NDC stations shows intolerance on the part of government. The word used there is reasonably necessary. Exactly. And I think that it's the unfair targeting I am complaining about. The unfair targeting that I posited that if you look at the chronology of the events, it presupposes that it is targeting pro NDC radio stations. Oh, that, did I say that? The, this intolerant <laughs> posture, the this <laughs> intolerant <laughs> posture by the Akufado administration is what is being exhibited here by uh, Pius. He has lost the argument. He's gone you somewhere. have decided that. <laughs> Once the government or a, a government agency is embarking on an activity or is embarking on an exercise, everybody must agree to it. Look, <laughs> in the Supreme Court case that you talked about, and the, the one we, the Supreme Court said that you reasonably necessary, licensing is reasonably necessary. In that same case, when the president was a lawyer of uh, uh, Roku Brobe and then uh, uh, the um, they disagreed with the position of the Supreme Court. Up to today, if you ask Roku Bobe, he strongly disagrees with that position. But what, that doesn't make... Exactly. That doesn't Their make, disagreement doesn't yes, change the fact No, what I'm saying is that that doesn't make them confused. <laughs> it doesn't make them look confused. So if today somebody is disagreeing or DJ is disagreeing with the approach, they are not saying they are wrong. They say the approach. You don't call them confused. Away from that, the Savannah Regional Minister Salifu Adam Braima has closed down operations of Bribe Wells Company. This follows the arrest of its owner Helen Wan for illegal possession of rosewood. Rivuals is a logging company near the Savannah Regional Capital, Damango, which has since inception operated at the blind side of authorities. The minister was astonished at the number of logs being harvested at the site. He has, however, set up a nine-member committee to investigate individual groups, institutions, including state institutions, who aided the company in the illegal logging activities. Meanwhile, police in the northern region has filed an application before the Tamale High Court to get uh, to the charity for Helena Juan to produce the suspect. This is in line with Section 104 of Act 30 of the Criminal Procedures. Suspect Helen Juan was granted police inquiry bail of 20,000 CDs and was to report at the police station every day. However, the suspect failed to report on both Thursday and Friday. According to the regional crime officer, uh, Superintendent Kwabna Otuo Echampong, the development prompted the application before the court to subpoena the charity to produce the suspect. Meanwhile, the four containers of lumber have been handed over to the Forestry Commission for safekeeping. Two or three days now, he's not been able to. So we are going to take action against the. Surety for having not been able to produce 
the uh, suspect. When he made us to believe that any time we needed her, he was prepared and ready to produce her. And now about 200 boys of Opom Memorial Senior High School in the Bekwai municipality of the Shanti region have been displaced after a rainstorm ripped off the roof of the main boys' dormitory. The students currently sleep in classrooms after classes as authorities seek assistance to re-roof the entire structure. Here's a report by Beatrice Piogabra. At the time of the news team's visit, mattresses were under the sun for drying. The boys now have to sleep in classrooms until the dormitory is roofed. Some of the mattresses used overnight are parked in corners of the classrooms while classes are in sessions. Headmaster of the school, Prince Charles, laments the school is already challenged with accommodation and the disaster has worsened their plight. We are in serious deficits so far as uh, dormitories are concerned in the school. And the one that we are even making do is now ripped up. So we are pleading to the government to come to our aid. At least if we get two dormitories for the boys and two dormitories for the girls. Prince Charles appealed for immediate assistance to re-roof the boys' dormitory as well as an additional girls' and boys' dormitory to accommodate more students. Municipal Chief Executive for Bekwai, Kwekuche Bafo, says personnel from the Works Department will visit the school to ascertain the extent of damage. We may not be able to meet them full because, as I said, we have a lot of the places that have been dislodged within the municipality. The KJ Traders Association has expressed dissatisfaction over what they describe as the high cost of renting shops and stalls at the redeveloped KJ market in Kumase. According to the group, traders would have to pay between 7,300 and 48,000 CDs to rent space at the markets for a five year period. Traders who cannot afford outright payments have the option of assessing a pre-finance agreement with Fidelity Bank at a 20% interest. The chairman of the Validation and Verification Committee, Nana Ajenim Boatin, says the initial valuation took into consideration the financial status of the traders. The government intervention for the five years with the bank is a minimum payment, daily payment of five cities, 67 pesos to 40 cities. So what it means is that the bank is taking charge of the 39,900 plus the principal plus interest and you're only paying 40 cities a day. The KJT Traders Association is however disappointed with the valuation and wants a review. Metropolitan Chief Executive or say SCB entry assure the traders their interests will be saved. Initially, some of them were in doubt as to what was going to happen. But we've been so transparent, we've walked them through the process and we've, we've told them where we are now. We've given them the rental values. We've also taken them through what we, we need to do. And now startups, small and medium scale enterprises are rushing to take advantage of Media General's Startup Fair and Funding Summit to market their products. Members of the general public are invited to enjoy massive discounts, free makeup for all the ladies and free eye screening as well. Some registered startups shared their expectations ahead of the fair. Media General has demonstrated its commitment to helping startups grow their business with its mover segment on business focus every Monday. The Kumasi Startup and SME Fair followed a successful mating event held in Accra last year. It afforded over 50 startups the opportunity to have the maximum exposure and also market their products to grow their business. Some of the participants in the mating edition recommended a similar event be held for entrepreneurs in the Ashanti region and other parts of the northern sector. Frank Sakite is into the production of virgin coconut oil. For him, participating in the mating event in Accra helped him make good sales as well as attract assistance from Maslock to expand his business. See, I heard about it and I went to Accra and the sales was 
crazy. I really loved it. And the exposure they gave us, I even had uh, a promise from uh, Maslock. Yes, the CEO from there. I mean, they, they invited from him the from the fair. Yes, so he came there and then he gave me a promise. So we are still in the process of even getting some loans from them. Frank Sakite entreats other entrepreneurs to take advantage of the fair to grow their business. I, I think that uh, only if the entrepreneur does not want to grow, if you really want to grow, you have to come to this fair because it will really expose you. People will be there. You know, TV3, they do a lot of adverts when they are having programs. So people will be there to purchase your products and you'll be exposed to the larger market. Speaking to TV3 ahead of the fair, some registered entrepreneurs express optimism of a successful event to boost and expand their business. I, I want to entreat all the beautiful ladies in Ghana to come over to Kumasi Mall on the 17th to 19th of this May, this month. Um, we'll be doing a free makeup. So if you come, come with all your friends. There will be a free makeup for you girls. And then once you get to know about the products, if you want to buy it from us, then you can get it from us. Aside the free makeup for all the ladies who will be visiting the startup fair, there will be free eye screening for all members of the general public. I know TV3 is one of the leading, if not the leading, one of the leading TV stations in Ghana. You have so many audiences and um, joining you to, to do that program will also push our image in terms of people getting to know about us and know that we offer these services somewhere in the outskirts of Kumasi and they can also benefit from the services that we provide. The startup fair is slated for May 17 to 19 at the Kumasi City Mall car park. Registration is still in progress. You can call 0241 272 606 0244 181899 or 0243 718 245 for some more details. You watch the news 360. It doesn't matter how small your business is, take advantage of the startup fair and funding summit and grow your business. News 360 will return shortly with Michelle. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Let's now do mission. And mission is supported by Star Ghana with thanks to UK Aid, European Union, and Danida. Now, the Doma Central Municipal Assembly has constructed and handed over a fully furnished six unit classroom block with an office to the Yaobofukrum community. This was after the structure accommodating pupils and teachers became weaker and was subsequently raised by rainstorm. Yaobofukrom is one of four adjoining communities inhabited by some 1,000 people. The community is fortunate to have its children educated because there is a school. However, the structure accommodating both pupils and teachers deteriorated till it could no longer serve its purpose. A rainstorm also worsened their plight. Then, the Doma Central Municipal Assembly intervened. It constructed finished and handed over a six-unit classroom facility after the community persistently drew their attention to the danger posed by the old structure. The building has an improved ventilation and electricity supply. The gated facility also has a place of convenience. The facility is already in use, but school was not in session at the time of the mission team's visit. Provisions were, however, not made for the kindergarten pupils. Because it happened to be an emergency situation, um, we don't have facilities for you know, KG1 and KG2. But we are looking forward to coming back here to probably do something for you know, the little ones. In a related development, the assembly secured funds to roof the Kosani MA Primary School after being dislodged by a rainstorm last year. Municipal Chief Executive for the Mass Central, Drisa Watara said the assembly is keen on improving education. This is what we came to meet as an administration, uh, but we are bent on doing our level best 
to making sure that uh, we are able to build enough schools for our people. Um, some we have to go in to renovate, others too, we need to start from the scratch. Stakeholders in the educational sector would have to do more to improve infrastructure development in the municipality. Stanley Nibliu, TV3 News, Yaobofukrom. Now, patients who visit the Denyame Health Center in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono Region for care can now heave a sigh of relief. This follows expansion of the health center by elders of the community. There are more than 1,500 residents at Denyame, in Sesraso, and four other adjoining communities. Although living in these farming communities is not easy, residents are fortunate to have a health facility to cater for their primary health care needs. But it is under-resourced and lacks space. Available space could not cater for all the four beds, so the corridor area was designated to contain the rest of the beds. For years, patients have been receiving health care in the open. The community then stepped in to provide a more spacious building. This was after health workers had... And that's all for Mission Tonight. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to UKA, the European Union and Danida. We'll be back with more after this. Please stay. Imagine living in a world of comfort and luxury, in a well-planned and gated community with access to an ultra-modern sports complex which has Olympic-sized swimming pools, football, basketball, athletics and gym facilities. I'm talking about Eden Heights, the new destination for luxury in Ghana. Eden Heights is developed with the highest grade of finishing in our penthouses in our one to four bedroom apartments and is located close to the beach resorts along the Atlantic Ocean, about 30 minutes drive from the airport and five minutes walk from the West Hills Mall. Eden Heights is the ideal location for luxury. Visit us at edenheights.com.gh or email to sales at edenheights.com.gh or call us on 050-153-1444 or 050-153-1445 for more information. Eden Heights, welcome home. Girls don't play football. Dolls are for girls. You can't do engineering, do arts. You can't work. You should be a housewife. Yes, she can. She can. She can. Softcare gives you the best protection so you can do it all. Softcare's advanced comfort fit design naturally molds itself to your form, while its lead guard prevents your time of the month from getting in your way. Soft, not weak. Softcare. Yes, she can. Welcome back. And then some residents of Ritz Junction at Aden Town want city authorities to fix lights on the completed footbridge. Speaking on the sidelines of an inspection tour of the facility by the Road Safety Commission, they express fear of being attacked by robbers at night due to the absence of lights. Officials from the National Road Safety Commission and the police MTTD where are the sites to assess safety features on the footbridge? The director in charge of education, research and training, Superintendent Alexander Obing, gave an assurance of other measures that were being put in place to enhance the safety of road users. Road engineer, as part of this contract, contract is going to introduce metal fencing on this New Jersey barrier, which is a median dividing the roads. And that will ensure that right from Adentan make it difficult for people to jaywalk day, night. 
and even during rainy season. And that it will direct and channel traffic. Board Chairman of the National Road Safety Commission, Reverend Ismaila Awudu, encouraged pedestrians to use the footbridge. It is user friendly for all categories of people. Bowlers that have been erected by the side is also well shielded. So even if you have height challenge or height phobia, you are secured when you are working on it. Despite being excited about its completion, residents express disappointment over the absence of light. We need a, a light, either a street light or a footbridge light. I mean, that to protect it in the night. And then, as well, we will need uh, the bus stops uh, moved closer to the bridges. The team's next port of call was the Adentan SDA junction, where work was progressing on another footbridge. People are robbed of their valuables at night. We are appealing to city authorities to fix light on the footbridge to improve pedestrian safety. Work on the six foot bridges on the six kilometer Medina Adentan stretch became necessary following violent protests by residents due to the increase in pedestrian knockdowns. Now, construction works on the three bridges at Bokrum and Moshizango in Kumase are at various levels of completion. Benjamin Edu reports contractors are working to relay underground utility and communication cables to fast track construction. TV3 has carried a series of reports on the weak state of some bridges and deplorable roads in parts of Kumase. Most of these road infrastructures are currently receiving attention. Three bridges along the airport roundabout, Bokrum Estate Junction, and on the Moshizongo Bokrum stretch are under construction. The areas have been identified as flood prone, with lives lost and property destroyed in past years. Contractors are busy on site as they block a section of the road to ease construction. Motorists in the area are, however, challenged in commuting as a result of construction works. But the project manager has appealed to motorists to bear with the inconveniences. And the Ghana Federation of Allied Health Professionals has threatened a strike on May 14 if government fails to inaugurate a governing board for the Allied Health Professions Council. Now, according to the Federation, the absence of the board over the last two years has given rise to infiltration of quack persons in the practice. The fight to get a board and a request to include at least one allied health professional on it has been on for two years. We need a board to be able to f ensure that the proper practice is done, quackery is rooted out, the state where unqualified professions are taken to work in the lab lab laboratories and other allied professional facilities, physiotherapy and other, should be a thing of the past so that we can protect you, the public, and safeguard the integrity of the professions. The second issue is that the, there should be a representative of the allied health on the teaching hospital board, which is uh, has the representative of a, 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 a clinician, the rep, one rep for a pharmacist, one rep for a doc. We should have at least two reps for the 18. It is only fair. The chairman of the Council of Presidents, Dr. Ignatius Awiniboni, says the absence was unfortunate. Somebody would be working on you when he's not qualified. Because the board which is supposed to check whatever is happening would not be there. Because there are no committees to inspect the, the, the facilities. So what will happen? It's a full day. He served notice of May 14 strike if government does not heed to their demands. The Ghana Federation of Allied Health Profession is an umbrella body for 18 registered health professional bodies in Ghana's health sector. Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection has admonished mothers of children with special needs to desist from abandoning them as they are potential future leaders. Cynthia Mamli Morrison was speaking at an event to first mothers with disability and mothers of children with special needs ahead of Mother's Day on May 12. Ghana will on Sunday, May 12th 
join the rest of the world to celebrate International Mother's Day in recognition and appreciation of the remarkable contributions mothers and mother figures have made to society. The Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection, as part of activities to mark this year's event, organized a feast in honor of mothers with disability and mothers of children with special needs. Mothers received food items and seed money as support to start any preferred business of their choice from the ministry and its partners, including Direct Aid, Ghana. The sector minister, Cynthia Morrison, spoke against the act of neglecting children with special needs by some mothers. I know it is frustrating having a child who is physically challenged, especially the one that looks so abnormal. The tendency is to kill the child or get rid of the child, dump her somewhere. But I will encourage that they are creatures of God. God knows why he brought them into the world. So if you have a child like that, it is because also we don't have a policy to support such mothers. And that is what I'm pushing and looking at. A situation where we can get money to support such parents. This year's celebration of Mother's Day is focused on celebrating motherhood, maternal bond, mothers with disability and mothers with children with disability. You're watching News 360. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. Up next is Entertainment News. Entertainment News is brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready? Cap Farm Ghana Limited, your number one electronics and home appliance discount and free giveaway store. In entertainment news tonight, the wife of Ghanaian actor Chris Atto has been shot dead. Betty Jennifer was shot while leaving her office in Maryland in the United States of America. Officers responded about 5.10 p.m. 44-year-old Betty Jennifer had left the office in the 6300 block of Ivy Lane and was walking to her car when a man armed with a handgun approached her, the Greenbelt Police Department said. When she tried to run away, the man followed her and fired multiple rounds with at least one shot striking her. Betty Jennifer was declared dead at the scene. The suspect then fled in a vehicle. The man was described as black and having a thin build with black hair. He was wearing dark clothing and may have been in a blue car. Currently, the police are searching for the gunman. Chris Atto and Betty Jennifer married at a ceremony in Accra, October 2018. This was shortly after divorcing his first wife, Nigerian actor Damilola Adebite, with whom he has a son. And Strings of Harmony, a classical music concert, was staged to celebrate six decades of Israel-Ghana relations as well as commemorating Israel at 71 independence anniversary in Ghana at the Nation National Theatre. Highlights of the night was a classical performance by the 60-year-old National Symphony Orchestra and Pan-African Youth Orchestra. <laughs> classical music, a tool to strengthen Israel-Ghana relation. The Strings of Harmony musical concerts brought together Ghanaian dignitaries, diplomats and some Israelis under the auspices of Israeli ambassador to Ghana, Shani Cooper. The concerts was to strengthen and celebrate the long-standing relationship between Israel and Ghana, spanning a period of six decades and give Ghanaians a taste of Israel's success with classical music. Classical music was at its best on the night in a joint spectacular performance featuring an Israeli maestro pianist, Mir Brand, 
the Ghana National Symphony Orchestra, and the Pan-African Youth Orchestra. We strongly believe that the relations between Israel and Ghana are sustained, they are good, and they can be even much better. Among the distinguished guests was the former First Lady Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rollins. Classical music, tip top. Orchestra, excellent. Conductor, perfect. For those of us who like classical music, we listen to it at home. So this is an extra one for us. Other guests shared their thoughts about the program. I enjoyed it as much as the audience did, and we're proud of the relations with Ghana. I was happy to make music with the people of Ghana. For you personally, a wonderful one for that matter. You know, I love Israel, so whenever it's the anniversary, I know what will come out. Now, as part of activities lined up to mark this year's Mother's Day celebration, May the General will on Sunday, 12 May, celebrate mothers with unique stories in grand style. In relation to this, the Evergreen Gospel Duo Tego Sisters, as well as other acts, have been built to add up to excitement. Mother's Day is a day for many people to show their appreciation to their mothers and mother figures worldwide. Who sacrifices her dinner for her children because there isn't enough available. There is that mother who toils in the scorching sun just to support her children's education. Considering the importance of the day, media general operators of TV3 have made it an annual ritual to make it a memorable one for all mothers. Some lucky winners will have the opportunity to dine and wine with their moms at the premises. Sweet mother. The Mother's Connect Banquet brings happiness and sometimes unity among some mothers and their children with platform for some mothers to share their success stories. Gospel duo Tego Sisters would entertain mothers on the day. We're glad that we, you call on us to be part of it. So we are waiting for our mothers, grandmothers, aunties to come to TV3 on Sunday for us to entertain to let you enjoy being mother. Oh, Nyamishirana, The Evergreen Tego sisters. Tego sisters. I wonder what gospel music would do without them in this country. <laughs> All right, that's it for this edition of News 360. I am Issa Money and I am black and proud. I am Aisha Yakubu and I am black and proud. Up next is Music Music. Enjoy. Music.